Hello everyone, my name is Dennis with DonkeySec here, and in today's video, we're going to be still going over the Try Hack Me, uh, you know, the sock simulator, but now we're going to be doing the Fishing Unfolding Challenge. So yeah, after looking at the alerts and already doing this, you know, sock simulator, the Fishing Unfolding is kind of like a step two to the introduction to fishing that I did last video. So yeah, it'll, it'll have the same alerts, but this time there's going to be severity alerts such as high and medium. All I have to do here is just wait until I get a alert that is not the same as last videos. Hey, here's a good example from the last video. Uh, we did analyze the .zip file. You know, important pending invoice. Invoice is misspelled. And February, you know, the date is misspelled. And something that is new that was not included in, in last video because it was super new. There's actually a try detectus from uh try hack me and it's a secure file and url analysis tool so going into our analyst vm right here we go to attachments we go to latest and we go here and we click on the invoice and we just drag it over here and it should say the invoice file and we, we can click analyze file and it does say analyzed as malicious the malicious pdf invoice that's misspelled badly and if you analyze it using try detect this, it has the hash values when you where you can look it up in virus total and you can, you can see the community, what the community says about these hash values. You can do copy, go to latest, and you just paste it here. And then you want to click right here and do powershell.exe. Now we're in the, you know, attachments latest uh, CD folder. So we just do LS. And then we do see the invoice.pdf.lnk file. We can do more and then invoice and then tab. And we can see what the uh, PowerShell script does of the PDF file. Then obviously, you know, looking at the GitHub user content, we know that PowerCat, what does PowerCat do? Allows users to establish network connections. And what does TCP NG Rook does? It allows users to deliver those connections based on a public port and forwards it to a local address. So data exploitation, basically. But yeah, that's just, you know, uh, something that is could save you a lot of time because obviously you can look at the logs on splunk and we can obviously see that this this string is going to be in splunk but we've already done that so there's no reason to do that again this time it's expanding further and there should be some alerts soon it's still uh phishing alerts from domains that don't even have attachments as of right now so i guess i gotta wait a little bit more longer Wow, would you look at that? Medium severity, medium, high, 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 high. So let's definitely investigate this. A network drive was mapped to a local drive. Normally it's not a cause for concern, but investigate it further. So we see that the command line used by Michael Ascot uses the file drive financial records. Spawned by PowerShell, what does process name net.exe does? Basically, it's net used to map network drives. This is definitely suspicious because it uses the C drive, not the C drive. So yeah, this is definitely suspicious, but let's, before we confirm our answer, let's, you know, dig through these bunch of, uh, you know, the IDs of the alerts and see if we can confirm that it is a true positive. Next alert right after this one uses robocopy.exe so we have to look that up and it's telling us that robocopy is downloads exploitation folder directory and it's coming from the c drive robocopy what is it used for copy large data sets lots of files across volumes a great tool for backing up data so so yeah, copy files and folders between locations. Robo EXE is copying the financial records. Now it seems like the network drive disconnects from the local drive using Z-delete. Net EXE, we know what that does and spawned by PowerShell. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but it's definitely a true positive here, but let's 
look at all of these uh, suspicious parent-child relationships. So yeah, looking at the Splunk logs, why is hardware.io being used in every single process rule created that is being used, such as the suspicious parent-child relationships? Because all of these hardware.io's is all being used on every single one of these alerts. And all of these right here, RMY, starts with RMY, VH, 8KK, DGF, and they all point to the .hardware.io domain. The reason why all of these are different because it's called data encoding where an attacker, you know, transmit data without not being in plain text to avoid detection. Yeah, it seems like all of these pipeline execution details, it runs this the same PowerShell execution, but the only different is the NS lookup of the, you know, the data encoding of the malicious domain hardware that IO. So after looking at all the Splunk logs, you can see, whoa, this is really big. Compared to all of these logs, look at how big this one is. And the reason why is because the attacker is using NS lookup onto the malicious domain using it for the zip file that's being exfiltrated and converting it into base64 string and using that string to send all of that you know whatever is being decoded or encoded by that base64 string from the zip file onto these nice victory security breach prevented so i did mark ID 1026 as a true positive, but in reality, it was a false positive. And my reasoning was because I thought the hacker was using rdclip.exe, which is a way to RDP, you know, copy text from the hacker's computer to the innocent user's computer. Yeah, that's all of the free SOC simulator scenarios. Obviously, I would love to get into more SOC simulator scenarios, but, you know, if TryHack Me can sponsor me, I'll gladly do all of the scenarios for free. But hopefully you guys or girls did learn something and I'll see you when I see you in my next video. Peace out.